Instagram. It's me, T, from the Patterson's Taking the Trench. Oh, hell, looking kind of old there. I guess I am kind of old, come to think of it. No, actually, after, this is supposed to be an uh, audio drama day. We talk a little bit about audio drama because uh, it's, it's a Thursday, right? And, you know, Fridays, we used to, Fridays sort of like, uh, you know, I should put a, a, a catch-all. I have to name it something. I have to figure out a good name for Fridays because it's the end of the week. Uh, things that I missed, I might put up things. I put things together and stuff like that. Um, and then Friday would be tomorrow. <laughs> uh, uh, Saturday is just a, a, a anything comes to my head day. Uh, Sunday is a anything comes to my head day also, but usually I try to read something uh, and base stuff off of that. And uh, Monday is uh, Monday is me day. Ooh, remember that. Uh, Tuesday is uh, U.S. stuff day. Wednesday is world stuff day over here on Thursday. And um, um, usually you talk about audio drama, and, and I'm doing audio drama in a roundabout way, uh, it's real roundabout, so roundabout you might not even get the roundabout. Well, here's like that. Hey, many feathers, New York in the house. Um, here's the thing. Uh, uh, John Amos passed, uh, and I want to hook, not hook this up to audio drama as much as to art. Uh, John Amos became famous, or or yeah, more uh, no, more notable. Because it's playing uh, the husband of Florida, you know, on, on good times. Um, but that happened. It is how things are, are linked up. Uh, uh, Esther Rowe, uh, when they created the series, uh, Esther Rowe said, "Look, I ain't gonna do this unless I have a husband. Right? <laughs> it's gonna be enough of this single mother. You know, the, the whole Julia. Uh, the, I'm sorry, you don't know Julia. It, it's that there was a, a TV, Diane Carroll did this TV program about a, a, a nurse, and uh, and she was a single mother. And so, so, so Esther Rowe who who comes from um, the, well, let's say she comes from the Negro Ensemble Company, because that's where, uh, well, she was in the rest, she, she was one of the, the residential people in Negro Ensemble, it, it included like Moses Gunn, uh, Fra Francis Foster, um, uh, uh, a bunch of people, people, uh, famous people that, that, that you know, Denise Nichols, um, a, a bunch of people in the 60s. It was a theater company, uh, and uh, it's, it, it's a theater company. <laughs> I know it because I was part of Negro Ensemble Company, uh, the, the intermediate acting class. Uh, so they had a residential company, and they had the the the, the, uh, the, uh, the professional company. Then we had an intermediate actor, we had a beginner's acting class, and uh, you know a lot of people went through, came through the Negro Ensemble Company. Uh, and I bring that up because uh, in that era, you know, there was a whole lot of things. People thought there was like fights between Negro Ensemble Company and say the. the uh, uh, the the uh, the new Lafayette players up there in Harlem because you know they were down down Second Second Avenue and and they were up there in Harlem and it's, but but no we all us well, we we just liked each other's work and so we you know we you know if uh, if Minnie Gentry was doing a play you know everybody would shoot out there see what see what she was doing and stuff like that that's the kind of area it was so in in the, in the in the inside every, everybody was just you know trying to promote actually promote blackness when you. Kind of, kind of, kind of think about it because there was a consciousness back then. Uh, in fact, it was interesting because uh, in my in, when I was in the neighborhood, I, I ran at my well, I guess the first job I had, the first job, yeah, first job I had in the theater was uh, running lights for Daddy Goodness. Um, it's a play, a Richard Wright play that uh, it, was, it was a funny play. <laughs> anyway, running lights for Daddy Goodness, and because of that, uh, you know, uh, who's I think. Uh, Michael Schultz did the lights, lighting design, and anyway, Michael Schultz and Buddy Butler were 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 were, 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 were involved, and um, and I was running the lights, and they came to me one time. They said to me, "Well, you know, Michael and Buddy, they both came to me, and they said, you know, you know, you you you're pretty good uh, acting, but they really said pretty good acting, but you know, that's not you acting, but you know, we need people behind a camera. Now that's important." <laughs> Because they specifically use the word camera, even though we're doing theater, right? They're hanging lights. Like I said, I ran lights with that. So that's how I know them. In fact, they, they assigned me to uh, um, to Ed Cambridge, who was, uh, who, was, who was a stage manager. That's how I learned stage managing, and that's how I really got uh, my bona fides in theater, was stage managing back then. Anyway, uh, but it was interesting that they said that we need more people in, in back of the camera. In fact, that's the thing they use. I later learned from D Douglas Turner Ward, who, who said... Uh, he said, you know, I, I asked him one time, how, how come Michael, you know, so Michael Schultz is a great, great uh, theater director, how come he never took over the Negro Ensemble? You know, do you, you, he said, he said, like, I offered it to him, but he wanted to do film. So Michael always wanted to do film. Anyway, 
back to what I'm trying to say. I know I'm meandering, but we'll, we'll get to it. And so there was a consciousness. So for, for Esther Rowe to insist that she have a black husband, that her black husband being uh, uh, John Amos, you know, uh, it's, to me is significant. I mean, that's how I get there. But there's another connection I like to make. I last saw John Amos, I mean, well, well I guess, yeah. Like, he did a play at the, um, uh, every year in North Carolina, they have a, a black theater festival, whatever, whatever you want to call it, theater festival there. And in one year, this was a long time ago, um, yeah, a pretty long time ago, he brought a play there, a one-man play called, I think it was Halley's Comet, where he played the character, it's about this character that was born, you know, when, when Halley's Comet comes back, like a hundred years, every hundred years it comes back. So it was born in that day that the Halley's Comet came back, and then this whole play about his life, and da-da-da, and, and, and finally, hell, I guess he dies in a play, something like that. But it was a one-man play. But it was interesting because the way it was done, the way, it, well, because John Amerson was a one-man play, but John Amos could play that, could do that part forever. I mean, you know, it's just this one man play, but, but you know, of course you could put the age and makeup, you know, so he could do that forever. And it got me to thinking, and I think this, and this is how it relates to audio drama. Audio drama, we do everything. It, I mean, it, costumes, it, everything is involved in audio drama, we'll get into it right now. Uh, but I think of it as an exit strategy. What's your exit strategy? In other words, you can't play the the, the ingenue, <laughs> you know, forever. You you can't play the, the whatever forever. You, you you always you always change. So, what's your exit strategy out of whatever situation you're in? Uh, the the art that that you're in. You know, like you you know that most dancers, you know, they, they become uh, you know like the Debbie Allen types. You know, they they become something because they they can. You know, the, the dance life is only but but so short. You can only dance for you know uh, your body will finally do whatever it does. So you have to have an exit strategy. But this is just in real life too. What's your exit strategy? When the world is coming down and what is your exit strategy? When I say exit strategy, what what talents can you bring to bear to make sure that you can continue on? And I'm talking about art arts specifically. I mean I know you, you people go retirement what stuff and blah 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 all that stuff. But but the exit strategy I'm I'm talking about is the exit strategy that that keeps you fulfilled but at the same time you know, help tells you. I'm talking about art specifically. So, in my thing, this would get bit audio drama. In my thing, audio drama <laughs> forever. It's a voice actor, you know. Da, 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 da. So, I just want to say that and uh, salute to uh, John Amos. Uh, he did. He did a lot of roles. You know, what I mean, I, I particularly like when he did. Uh, uh, I like I like when people would pay villains, play villains. I think in Die Hard Two is the villain. You know, the uh, anyway. You know the military guy, the whatever. So, so he was good, and and of course the good times thing. I liked him in good times, uh, but more. I liked him that Haley's comment. Talk to you later. <laughs>